So my first tip with the Mavic Pro is make sure you focus it. And this is really easy to do with this button just here. If you use the default mappings, you just press this, and it'll focus right to the middle of the screen, making sure your footage is in focus and crisp and not blurry or washed out, which you sometimes only find later on when you watch it on the computer. Now, generally when I send up my Mavic, I don't muck around with any of the settings. I set it in auto because I don't want to be mucking around with ISO, aperture, shutter speed. When it's up in the air, and I've only got a limited flight time anyway. But the one thing I do do is set the color mode to be D-Log, which allows for color grading later on to be able to bring out more dynamic range. So if we just press these three lines with the circles on it, go color, and you've got all these options, D-Logs, D-Cine like normal, bloody bar, they all do different things. You can film in black and white, but the one I like to use is D-Log. Looks a bit gray now, but when you bring it up on the computer later, you can really make colors pop and it's pretty good footage. So following on from that, my next tip is to actually color grade your footage. So if we have a look here, I've got some footage that I filmed, doesn't look very good, looks very washed out, that's just because it's in D-Log. First thing I like to do is actually grab that clip and put it in um, your source viewer as well. So you can basically compare from before and after. And then go up to your color workspace here, click on your clip, and we've got Lumetri color across the side here. So you might know the concept of LUTs. I've uh, got a couple of different kinds of LUTs. We've got basic correction, um, that just has kind of um, uh, preset cameras. We've actually got creative looks here. So you've got a whole bunch of different creative looks. And for some reason that's gone up, not down. But I can see them all here on my screen. Um, just basically go through and try some of them out. Um, there's a few of them I like and a few of them just look stupid. But if we do something like that, uh, SL Bleach didn't look too good. Um, Blue Steel, that looks all right. Gives you a pretty um, cinematic kind of look there. Um, and basically go through and try out a whole bunch of different these different ones of these till you find something you like. Um, this is applied at 100% intensity, so you can go ahead and reduce the intensity if you just want a blend of that, or you can actually increase it and go further the other way. Something else I like to do is in basic correction up here, you've got exposure contrast highlights. I like to up the, uh, the contrast a bit, gives it a bit more dramatic of a feel. Um, and you can also increase the saturation, which increases the vibrosity of the colors, basically. So you can see you can, from the right compared to the left already looks much better, and I spent all of about three seconds on that. My third tip's with the gimbal, and as you can see here, I'm moving it quite slowly, which doesn't give you that disorientating and jerky look that quicker gimbal moves give you. It's actually good, you can update this in the settings. If you go through to settings, press this little camera icon, go to advanced settings, you can actually set, set your gimbal pitch speed. So you can slow it right down, so you actually have no possibility of actually moving it too quickly, which always ruins your shot when you do that. My next tip is tripod mode, which can be used to create amazing hyperlapses. It's really easy to get into, tap the controller on the left and then tap tripod mode and hit OK. It slows the drone right down, making all the movements slow and steady. And then if you do it over the course of 20 minutes, you can make a really amazing time lapse by speeding up the footage. Let me show you. My next tip is a little more abstract, and that is to follow a subject. So often you see sweeping landscape shots of cities or beaches, but it really makes it interesting if you actually pick a particular subject and follow that along through your landscape. For example, a car or a person walking. Let's take a look. So my next tip is to use the Mavic Pro's 4K sensor and crop this down or zoom it into 1080p, enabling you to actually zoom or crop in post-production without losing any detail. So I've got this clip selected here in uh, Premiere Pro of this guy riding his bike, which is what I used earlier for tracking a subject. And we've got this scale option up here in effects controls. You can actually go up to 200% without losing any quality if you've got a 4K clip in a 1080p timeline. So go ahead and do 200%. 
you can see I've zoomed in heaps. You can actually see me filming right there. And then if we just use these controls here to adjust where we want to look. Let's say we want to do that. And we can go ahead and watch that clip. You can see I've basically zoomed in on the guy riding the bike. Now in um, Premiere Pro, which is beyond the scope of this video, but you can actually set the position to move too, so you can follow something uh, across the frame. So that's a pretty good uh, feature. My next tip is to wear headphones. The amount of times I've been asked, how much was the drone? Where can you fly it? Is it safe? Is it legal? Blah, blah, blah. The list goes on. I understand there's a lot of public misconceptions about drones, but really after the first 100 times of answering that question, I'm kind of sick of it. And I've got a limited flight time in the air anyway with the battery. So I put in headphones, generally people just don't speak to you, which is great. So another tip I have is to use an iPad mini for your controller. So the iPad mini is just a little bit bigger than um, like an iPhone plus, for example, but still fits in the controller and easily goes into your backpack. Um, and it just fits in. You'll need a slightly longer cable to be able to connect it to the USB port underneath the controller. But once you've got it in, you get a much bigger screen. You're able to um, more clearly see what you're filming. Another tip I have is to connect your phone to the controller and turn everything on before you leave the house while you're still in Wi-Fi. Often there's firmware updates and when you're in the middle of nowhere, you don't want to be sitting there for half an hour downloading an update and then applying it, not to mention the data usage that it uses. So if you just do it at home, allocate some time beforehand, generally there will be something to download, so go ahead and download that, update it, and you're not losing any battery life or precious time in the outdoors. So an optional tip for your Mavic Pro is to throw in an ND or neutral density filter, which DJI sells for four, a four pack for about $100. Um, they're kind of like sunglasses for your camera and you just throw them on the lens on the top and they basically um, reduce the light coming in. So if you add in the daylight, it's not as bright and that means you can drop down that shutter speed, drop down the aperture and still get great shots without it being washed out. So those are my 10 tips on how to best fly a Mavic Pro. If you enjoyed this video or got something out of it, give this video a thumbs up. Otherwise, leave a comment with any tips you might have on how to fly a drone.